Welcome to Rough Gear Review. Tonight we're going to have a look at the CD15 pistol and we'll talk about the California laws that pertain to this. Now I am the owner of Camden Defense so this is a little bit self-serving but when we got this pistol on the roster a couple of weeks ago uh, we got quite a few questions. It seemed people were a little bit confused. Uh, a lot of talk about a gray area and we just wanted to set the record straight tonight. Um, first, we're not lawyers. Uh, this is in no means uh, legal advice. What we are going to do, though, is we're going to pull up all the laws in California that have to do with pistols that are on the roster. All the quote-unquote safe handguns on the California DOJ approved roster. Uh, what you can, what you can't do, and what the law says. There is really no gray area. It's pretty black and white. Uh, but we're going to have to go through it step by step, just so you understand. But what we really want you to do is we want you to look all this information up yourself. Um, you really should read this for yourself, so it's first-hand knowledge. shouldn't listen to me. You shouldn't listen to gun shops. You should not listen to forums. You really need to just do the research yourself. We're going to make it real simple tonight. Um, we'll tell you what all the penal codes are. You just got to look them up and read through them. But we're going to read through them tonight. So first, the first big question we got was, if they put a gas system on this or swapped out the upper, would they be making an assault weapon? And the answer is absolutely not. You cannot make this pistol into an assault weapon. Now, the way the pistol comes, there is no gas system on this. There's no hole in the barrel. There's no gas block. There's no gas tube. This is considered a straight pullback action pistol. It's not a single shot exemption either. This is a straight pullback. This has a magazine with 10 rounds in it. You charge it, fire, charge it, fire. That's how it works. Now, if you were to put a semi-automatic upper on this, or you swapped out the barrel and put a gas tube and gas block on here, now this would be a semi-auto pistol. But it would still be a fixed magazine pistol, not a detachable magazine pistol. And that's what we're going to focus on, what the law says. So the first thing you want to look up is the California Guide to Assault Weapons. It's going to be in a PDF form. You can easily find it in the search engine. Open that up, and you're going to want to scroll down to the Characteristics section. And in that section, you're going to go down to Pistols. And it's 12276.1A. And what you're looking at is Section 4. I'm going to read that to you. Section 4 reads, a semi-automatic pistol that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine and any one of the following. And there's going to be an A, B, C, and D. But here's the trick. It's a semi-automatic pistol that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine. This is not detachable. This is a fixed magazine. That means A, B, C, and D do not apply to this gun. Now we'll go through them still, but I want you still to read them, but I'll, I'll just point them out. A is a threaded bar barrel capable of accepting a flash suppressor, forward hand grip or silencer. This is a threaded barrel. This does have a flash hider on it, but this is a fixed magazine. It's not detachable, so it doesn't apply. The second one is a second hand grip. Now granted, even though this is fixed mag, there's a federal law against putting a vertical or a second hand grip on here, so don't do that. Um, C is the shroud that surrounds the barrel. Sure, this has one, but this is fixed magazine, not detachable, so it doesn't apply to this. Uh, D is the capacity to accept a detachable magazine outside of the pistol grip. Now, sure, this has it. The magazine goes into the well here, not into the grip, but it's still fixed magazine, not uh, detachable, so it doesn't apply. The one that does apply is number five, a semi-automatic pistol with a fixed magazine and the capacity to accept more than 10 rounds. So from the factory, your gun's going to come with a 10 round magazine, okay? If you put in your gun a 20 round, a 30 round, an 11 round mag, you've now made this an assault weapon, so don't do that. So as far as the assault weapon portion goes, you don't want to put a second grip on here, you do not want to put anything over a 10 round mag in a fixed magazine weapon. 
That's any of your fixed magazine weapons. AR rifles, whatever it is. Now, if you're asking, well, what's a detachable magazine? What's a fixed magazine? California has definitions for all that, too. Uh, it's in what's called the California Code of Regulations, Title 11, Chapter 39. It's my understanding these regs were withdrawn, but this is still the only written definitions you're going to find. You can look them up, and they're all right there. I'm going to read them to you. Uh, we're going to go with P. That's uh, fixed magazine. Fixed magazine means an ammunition feeding device contained in or permanently attached to a firearm in such a manner that the device cannot be removed without disassembly of the firearm action. Now, you go further. If you look up, on K is the definition of contained in. Contained in means the magazine cannot be released from the firearm while the action is assembled. For AR-15 style firearms, this means the magazine cannot be released from the firearm while the upper receiver and lower receiver are joined together. So this upper receiver and lower receiver are joined together. You cannot remove the magazine. Then it goes further, you could read what disassembly of the firearm action means. That is N. Disassembly of the firearm action means the fire control assembly is detached from the action in such a way that the action has been interrupted and will not function. For example, disassembling the action of a two-part receiver like that on an AR-15 style firearm would require the rear takedown pin to be removed, the upper receiver lifted upwards and away from the lower receiver, using the front pivot pin as the fulcrum before the magazine can be removed. So, in our particular gun, if you were to remove the rear pin, and this isn't removing it all the way out, it has a capture detent in there, but you've removed it enough, the upper is moving upwards and away from the lower, it's using the front pin as a fulcrum, and now at this point you can remove the magazine. You then reinsert it, close it, and again, it's fixed. Now that's no different than this gun. Now this is a CD15 as well. It just, when I was in Arizona, I modified it. I put on a gas system, a gas tube, different handguard. I mean, you can see I've done tons of changes here. But this is still a fixed magazine and still not an assault weapon. I use the Juggernaut Hellfighter rear pin, push that in, the upper does go upward and away from the lower receiver. It's still using the front pin as a fulcrum. The magazine is removable, but you'll see the action of the gun is interrupted. It no longer works. Put the magazine back in, close the upper and lower receiver, and now my action works again. This is a fixed magazine, not detachable by every definition California has. So then comes the last question that we get. Am I manufacturing an unsafe handgun? So there's a whole section on that as well. You're going to head over to California Penal Code 32000A. And I'm going to read that one to you. A person in this state who manufactures or causes to be manufactured imports into the state for sale, keeps for sale, offers or exposes for sale, gives or lends an unsafe handgun, shall be punished by imprisonment in the county jail for not more than one year, which is a misdemeanor, okay? But, so, and that's where everybody talks about the gray area. But you can't change the trigger in your Glock or change the barrel in your Glock or the slide without making an unsafe handgun. Can't have it both ways. You can't change the trigger in a Glock and not change the upper on an AR pistol. One way or another, you're making an unsafe handgun out of both of those. And that's because when we submit this to the DOJ, this is exactly how it's submitted. This goes through testing. When it passes testing, then it goes to the DOJ. I'm not allowed to change anything about this gun. I can't change the springs, I can't change the trigger, 
Because if I do that, then it's not the tested version that went to the DOJ that became an approved handgun. Now I could change the color, and I could change the grip, I could even change the engraving on the gun. None of that is making the gun unsafe. So if you Cerakoted your Glock, you didn't just make your Glock unsafe, you just changed the color. You change your grips on your 1911, same thing, you didn't make the gun unsafe, you just change your grips. But if you're changing triggers or springs or barrels or recoil guides or anything, Technically, well, not even technically, legally, you're making an unsafe handgun because that's not the gun that got approved by the California DOJ. And that's the part where we hear everybody tell us, oh, that's a gray area. Well, it's not. It's black and white. You can't have it both ways. But look at that law closer and you'll understand kind of how and why you can do certain things. Now, if I was to go to Arizona and I decide to completely customize my gun, I'm not in the state. It doesn't say a resident of California, it says a person within the state. So even if you're from Arizona and you come to California, you still can't make an unsafe handgun because you're in the state. But if I'm in Arizona and I come home with my gun in this configuration, but I have absolutely no intent of selling it, loaning it, or giving it away, then I'm not breaking any laws. I'm 100% legal. And I'll read that to you again. Imports into the state for sale, keeps for sale, offers or exposes for sale, gives or lends an unsafe handgun. So as long as I'm not doing any of that, I'm not breaking any laws. So I can't make an assault weapon out of it, and as long as I'm not selling it, giving it, or lending it, then I'm not breaking any of the importation laws either. Matter of fact, I'm not breaking any laws. Until December, when we get a ruling on this. Then we'll find out about that. But uh, here in October, this is still okay. And there you have it. So those are all the laws that pertain to these AR pistols. They're not gray. It's black and white. It's very simple to follow. We're going to you know, go through the video. We have all the links for the laws. Just look them up. Read them for yourself tonight. And uh, if you have any questions, you can email us at info at camdendefense.com. Comments on this video are going to be disabled. I don't, uh, I don't want to read them because um, I'm sure they're going to be crazy. But if you have legitimate questions, please feel free to email us, info at camdendefense.com. Again, this is not legal advice. All I did was read you the California laws and the penal codes. Strongly suggest that you look them up tonight, look them up tomorrow, read all this info for yourself. Don't just take it from us. Don't take it from gun shops. Don't read it in the forums. Read this information for yourself. It's very simple to follow the laws, not break any California law, not get in trouble. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.